Hi everyone, you must have noticed by now that we haven't done any uh, taking user input uh, in Java and the reason we haven't done that is because Java treats all kind of input output in the same way so uh, whether it's taking input from the keyboard or whether it's reading from a file writing to a file or whether it's over the network Java treats it in the exact same way and that's what we are going to be doing in this video so first of all i want to start with uh, one of the most commonly used classes for uh, taking user input and uh, this video is actually going to become slightly complicated because there are a lot of classes that we are going to be looking at so the first one is java.util.scanner so that's what i've imported and let's create a new scanner um, let's say s equals new scanner and we need to give this a stream which is uh, system dot in so uh, first of all first of all what is a stream a stream is just a sequence of data and uh, there are three default streams um, system dot out system dot in and system dot err and uh, we've already used system dot out for printing and uh, system dot in is the one that we are going to be using now so this one is uh, actually attached to the keyboard so it's the default uh, input stream so uh, that's what we have given here so we want the scanner to read from uh, whatever we give in the keyboard so uh let's just make a string input equals um s dot next line and this thing kind of uh, acts like an iterator it uh, crosses the line and gives us whatever uh, line that it has crossed so let's just go ahead and do a system dot out dot print ln and input dot to uppercase and let's go ahead and compile this and let's run this so it's actually waiting for me to input something so let's say I enter Java uh, it prints out Java in uppercase and uh, terminates the program so uh, we have actually managed to read user input from here so uh, scanner is one of the most uh, commonly used classes for uh, user input now uh, next thing we are going to be looking at is we are going to be looking at um, more streams so there are basically two types of streams one of them is a byte stream uh, which reads uh, stuff byte by byte and the second one is a character stream um, and this one reads um, it char by char character by character and uh, there's actually four abstract classes uh, in Java these are um, input stream um, output stream reader and writer so um, these two are uh, actually byte streams and the reader writer are character streams and uh, these are actually abstract classes and there's a lot of classes that are um, inherited from these and those are the ones that we are going to be using and uh, it's here that it's going to become slightly uh, confusing because uh, there's going to be a lot of classes now so uh, the first one we need to look at is um, let's say we create an input stream reader um, let's name this i equals new input stream reader and again we need to give it system dot in and um, just something that i want to mention here uh, system dot in is actually a byte stream and um, it actually makes uh, 
more sense to have had it as a character stream maybe but uh, these three streams are actually um, older than java itself and uh, earlier characters were just one byte so uh, later characters have become two bytes and that's what java uses a char in java is two bytes but uh, if you know if you know c or c++ the characters in there are one byte so uh, actually whatever characters we input from the keyboard are uh, one byte it's the extended characters which are uh, more than that so these three are byte streams and um, let's come back here we've created an input stream reader and let's just do the exact same thing let's just um, um, actually we won't be able to do the same thing I'll tell you the reason in a bit so what we'll do instead is just do a system.out.println and um, let's just read i.read and let's convert this to a character and um, I expect an error here um, that's basically uh, because it says cannot find symbol input stream reader so uh, one thing you should always remember is to import java.io.star for things like input stream readers and um, other streams and readers etc and another thing that um, let's just compile it again I'll get another error it says unreported exception and that's basically because uh, these uh, streams and readers they throw io exceptions so uh, let me just write throws io exception here i could instead have a try catch block inside my main and that'll work too but i don't want to do that right now so let me just clear this out and compile it now and let's do java file io and again it's waiting for me to enter something so let me just enter a j so it printed out a j again and the reason we weren't able to do the same thing uh, here is because um, this input stream reader reads things um, as i said uh, character by character and um, it doesn't really have a read line method or a next line method which will uh, read an entire line so uh, for that reason we'll actually have to uh, keep reading characters so if i actually want to read a line i would have to run a loop here so uh, that's another thing and uh, another thing i can do here is i can use a file reader so instead of an input stream reader let's just make it a file reader and um, here we'll give it the name of a file and i've got a file called binary string.txt here which has just a bunch of ones and zeros that i wrote and that's what i'm going to pass so binary string.txt and um, let's uh, just read the first character that's fine let's compile this now and uh, let's run this and as you can see it printed out a one which is uh, the first character here uh, we could actually even run it till uh, for the entire eight characters so i can actually just do for int i equals zero um, i less than eight and i plus plus and just keep printing for eight characters and let's just make this a print instead of a print line so that it prints it all in one line Alright, so I can't use I here. Let's just go for J. Um, the I that I've uh, named the file reader is not actually a good name. So when actually writing programs, just um, make sure you give it better names than that. And there we go. I get the exact same output as I have here. So a 100, 10101. So uh, this is actually working fine 
and another thing that I want to show you here is the file object itself so uh, what we can do is file um, f equals new file and I can give this a name here so binary string txt again so uh, one thing that I like to point out here is um, this line actually makes it look like uh, I'm creating a new file, but that's not the case. This binary string.txt, the name I've passed, is a file that I already have. And what we are actually doing here is we are creating a new file object in Java. And this file object points to this file called binary string. So that's what we're doing. And uh, there's quite a few things we can uh, do with this file um, system.out.println let's just copy this once and um, I can do f dot is file and um, I can do f dot is directory and I can do uh, f dot can read I think and let's just do an f dot read as well so um all right so this doesn't have a read method but the others are correct i guess um i can save this and it prints out true false and true and the questions that i've asked it, asked are uh, is file so it says yes uh, is directory it says no and uh, for can read it says um, yes again so uh, there are quite a few methods in the file uh, object and i'm sure you can uh, look them up but uh, another thing that you might have noticed from this method right here is that my file object can actually hold a directory as well so let me just put a dot here so a dot means the current directory so if i run this now i actually get a false for the is file and a true for the is directory so uh, when you have a file object uh, hold a directory what happens is uh, the the file the contents are a list of files in that directory so uh, if you try to read from the file from the file object it'll give you the names of um, those uh, files in that directory and um, i think there's also another method here that we can be able to use which is f dot last modified i'm not very sure about this you can look it up but I yes so this gives us a timestamp of when the file was last modified so um, these are all the methods that you can use in the file object and there are a lot more um, be sure to look those up and uh, there's another concept of a buffered reader but um, I think this video is already uh, past 13 minutes so let's leave that for next video um, I hope to see you there.